Hi, thanks for dropping by. This video is about SHM graphs in the time domain. We'll start with the displacement time graph. For an SHM, the displacement varies sinusoidally with time. The equation to describe this variation will be x equals to x naught sine omega t. Must it be sine omega t? No. If we have started the graph from here, then it should have been cosine omega t. And we could have started the graph from anywhere. But because we have chosen to start the graph from here, that's why it's sine omega t. x naught, of course, corresponds to the amplitude of the oscillation. What is the omega doing here? Remember, omega is 2 pi over period t. So whenever time progresses by 1 period t, omega t will progress by 2 pi radians. So omega actually scales our graph properly such that a time of 1 period will correspond to 2 pi radians corresponding to 1 complete oscillation. To go from the xt graph to the vt graph, we are going to differentiate with respect to time this equation. So on the left hand side, we get dx dt, which is of course velocity. When we differentiate sine omega t, we get cosine omega t and the omega is going to pop out to give us omega x naught. And immediately, we recognize that omega x naught must correspond to the maximum, ex, uh, maximum velocity of the oscillation. So the VT graph is cosine omega t and the maximum velocity is given by omega x naught. So we're going to do the trick one more time. We're going to differentiate with respect to time this equation here. So dv dt is acceleration. When we differentiate cosine omega t, we get negative sine omega t. And the omega is going to pop out once again, giving us omega square x naught. Immediately, we recognize that omega x naught must correspond to the maximum acceleration of the oscillation. So the acceleration time graph is negative sine omega t with a maximum value of omega square x naught. Now let's look at the phase relationships between these three graphs. Notice that the acceleration time graph is leading the velocity time graph by a quarter of a cycle. So that tells us that in an SHM, the acceleration leads its own velocity by a quarter of a cycle. Likewise, the velocity time graph is leading the displacement time graph by a quarter of a cycle. So that tells us, in an SHM, the velocity is always leading its own displacement by a quarter of a cycle. What's more important is the relationship between acceleration and displacement. Notice that the acceleration and the displacement time graph are just opposites of each other. Right? The opposites of each other. And in fact, we know the exact equation describing this relationship is A is equal to negative omega square x. Now, where, where did this come from? Look here. What is x naught sine omega t? Isn't it just x? So it's staring right at our face. A is equal to negative omega square x. 
And this is the defining equation for SHM. So whenever you have a motion whose acceleration is opposite in sign and directly proportional to its own displacement, then that motion is going to be SHM. Okay, that's all. Ta-ta!